you may be familiar with this iconic print by Hokusai. The Great Wave of Kanagawa is arguably the most famous Japanese artwork ever made and it is a global brand in itself. It is part of a larger series of woodblock prints called 36 views of Mount Fuji which were largely made between 1830 and 1832 by the Japanese artist Hokusai. And as the title of this series suggests, all prints have one common element, which is the presence of the iconic Mount Fuji, the tallest mountain in Japan, standing at 3776 meters or 12,389 feet tall. This series provides a wonderful and diverse view of Japan, showing the mountain from all angles under different weather conditions and seasons. This print, for example, shows a tea house in the Koishikawa district in Tokyo, the morning after a large snowfall. And here we can see a lake in the Sagami province in the middle of the summer. You may have seen one or more originals of these prints in museums around the world. The reason for this is that many prints exist of each of the views of Mount Fuji. These copies are known as woodblock prints. To make these, Hokusai first created a drawing of each view. This paper was then glued onto a woodblock, which helped him to carve the necessary patterns into the wood. The carvings in each woodblock were then filled with ink and used to print on paper. The main complication of this process was that for each color that Hokusai wanted to apply, he had to create a separate block. So, if we look at the great wave, we can see the paper itself in the background of the top half. And then there are white areas, some black and a few shades of blue. So that would mean the use of several different wood blocks with one unique color each, a technique known as Nishikie. Now there were some tricks that could be used to apply different colors to a print. One of them was to print the main colors using the wood block and then apply any additional colors by hand, something that was of course much more labor intensive when creating many prints of a single image, but it would allow for the customization of each print. So if we compare the Great Wave with the barrier town on the Sumida River, we can see that the latter has more unique colors, which meant that a large number of wood blocks would have to be used. But at the same time, if we look at this print in some more detail, we can see that the total number of colors here is also still limited, and we can see the same colors come back in different elements. To put this Japanese woodblock printing technique in perspective, it shows some similarities with the woodcut technique popular in Europe. One important difference is that in Europe they used oil-based inks, whereas water-based inks were the medium of choice in Japan. One consequence of using water-based inks is that the prints seem to have more vivid colors than the woodcut-based prints. Once the publisher of this series of prints on Mount Fuji noticed that it was becoming a large success, the plan was made to expand the series to 100 prints. Hokusai, who was now in his 70s, but at the height of his career, decided to make 10 more prints, bringing the total to 46 views of Mount Fuji, and then he decided it was enough and he focused on other series. He would actually continue to improve himself as an artist until his death at age 88. He was incredibly productive and it is estimated that he created over 30,000 paintings, sketches, woodblock prints and other images during his career. It has put him among the greatest artists in world history, along the likes of Michelangelo, Titian and Monet, other artists that enjoyed a long and successful career. And the two things that contributed to his enduring success were his exceptional talent as a draftsman and his innovative compositions. The 46 prints show the relationship between mankind and nature. In some prints we can explicitly see how people use the land, like this print of workers on a tea plantation, this craftsman, the workers at a watermill, 
or these workers at the timber yard. But in some other prints, the people are completely absent, putting the focus on the diversity and magnificence of the landscape and Mount Fuji in particular. Well, I hope you enjoyed this discussion of the 46 views of Mount Fuji. Let me know if you have any favorite among the prints shown here, and I'm also curious to hear which Japanese artworks or artists are among your favorites. And if you enjoy this kind of art, you may want to check some works by artists like Hiroshige, Kunisada, Koitsu, or one of the many other ukiyo-e artists. And if I butcher some of these pronunciations, just put your subtitles on to see the correct spelling of their names. I would like to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and want to see more of my videos, please check out my channel and subscribe. And consider leaving a thumbs up to help other people discover this video.